Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And if you're new here and you like this kind of content, I hope you will consider subscribing. Now, Moscow Moto Reckless Luggage. I did a video on the Reckless 10 and the Reckless 40, and I promised that I would do a separate video on the Reckless 80, and here it is. So today, I'm not gonna tell you every single little tiny technical detail of the bag or how it works or the instructions for use or how to mount it because I feel that's best carried out by the folks at Moscow Moto. They've got great videos on their website. So if you're really strongly considering buying this bag, you should watch my little review video here, but also check out the videos they have on their website, on their YouTube channel. They go through all the technical breakdown and how to use the bag. So with that, uh, let's talk about the Reckless 80. This is the V3.0 revolver. So I, this is the third revision they've had on this bag, hence 3.0. And revolver just means that the legs of the bag uh, can rotate uh, up and down depending on what kind of motorcycle you install this on. So it has four different angles that it can be, that you can, the legs can be attached to the harness depending on the kind of bike you have. Now let me back up a little bit. Uh, I've talked about this in some other videos, but why would you choose rackless luggage as opposed to traditional rack-mounted hard or soft panniers? Well, there's a few main reasons. Um, one is going to be weight. Uh, it's a lighter weight setup and you don't have the weight of pannier racks. Two is gonna be uh, the width and the narrowness of the setup and how it keeps the weight centralized uh, further in towards the bike center. So for off-road handling, I guess even for on-road handling, really, uh, it maintains your handling. It doesn't affect your handling as much as having panniers outside the bike acting as kind of levers that make the bike kind of wobbly. Um, so off-road riders really are catching on to these rackless systems. It's narrower, the bags don't stick out as far for aerodynamic reasons or for reasons of riding on tighter trails. Also, it's a universal. You can take a bag like this and put it on most just about any motorcycle. So if you're doing international trips, fly and ride trips, things like that, <clears throat> you could take the bag with you, throw it on your rental bike, and you'd have luggage. You probably can't do that with a traditional pannier because that motorcycle wouldn't have the racks that you would need in order to do that. Another reason might be cost. It's not dramatically less expensive than uh, Moscow Motors own Backcountry 35 plus a luggage rack, but it is less because you're not adding that cost of the rack. Now, the price, so that's something right up front we should get out of the way, kind of the elephant in the room. This is not a cheap setup. This is not a budget-oriented setup. This is not for somebody looking to save money. This is uh, Moscow Moto luggage and apparel uh, is what I found to be some of the most high-quality, most well-engineered motorcycle products you can get. And with that comes a premium price tag. Price and value are different. I think the Moscow Moto product, products are a good value because you're getting an extremely high quality product. Are they cheap? No. Um, so if you're on a budget, there's other options you can look at. I have a lot of reviews of the Tusk luggage on this channel just to name one example. So yes, they're expensive, but you're getting what you pay for. Extremely high quality, made to last. They back it up with customer service and they've thought of every tiny little detail, which I'll talk about a little bit here. Before I go any further, probably should bring up a few of the downsides of a rackless luggage system. We talked about some of the benefits. Downsides, um, they're harder to pack. Uh, this is true because let's say you have an item at the bottom. It's like a big long tube, okay? You've got the dry bag that goes down inside the harness. If you pack an item down in the bottom here, you're gonna have to pull all the stuff out to dig down there and get into that. Also, it's a little bit more awkward to pack a long kind of tube than it would be to pack a traditional pannier. So you do have that. Also, there's a lot more straps in the equation here. There's tensioning straps, there's straps for the side bags, there's straps that go into the bike, there's, there's a lot of strap management here. Moscow Moto gives you strap keepers uh, for every single strap on the bag. Also, some of the straps swivel, which is a really, really nice feature. It's well designed, but you're dealing with a lot of straps with a system like this, whether you go with Moscow Moto or another brand. So speaking of mounting, uh, these bags, uh, they have front mounting points that are gonna go to the frame of your bike, maybe your passenger pegs. Make sure with any bag like this that you don't route the straps near an exhaust, near a tire, a chain, anything hot, anything that's gonna damage the strap. Uh, now, and in the back, you're gonna need to have some sort of attachment point for the three straps that secure the rear of the bag. So you have straps pulling forward and you've got straps pulling backward, meaning that the whole bag is very, very secure. If you mount it correctly and follow the instructions, it's not gonna go anywhere. You can get a little bit of movement like this 
there's no way to eliminate all that movement out of it. It's not a problem, it's just something to be aware of. If that bothers you, then maybe consider a rack mounted pannier system. Let's talk about the capacity and sort of how these things work. So you've got the two side pods. They are expandable. You can pack, I've got them pretty full. You can pack a lot of stuff in them and roll them more close to the top. Or you can, if you pack them only to here, you can roll this down and tighten it down. So they have a lot of flexibility in terms of if you have a lot of stuff on one trip and maybe you take another trip, you don't have as much stuff. There's molly attachments points here on the front where you can attach uh, Moscow Moto accessory bags or pouches or whatever brand you want. Uh, the way that, that these are going to come set up is with the two ox pox, the four liter ox pox on the back, with, which have included dry bags. It's also going to come set up with their 22 liter stinger tail bag. Now, the capacity is expandable, uh, or you can also compress the capacity like we talked about. If you want more capacity, put the uh, Scout 30 liter duffel up here instead of the 22. That gives you eight more liters. If you want more capacity, you can attach something back here to this beaver tail with a molly attachment. You could also attach another, put another bag um, inside here between the beaver tail and your duffel bag. You could add bags to, you know, the side pod. So you see what I'm saying. You can add a lot of stuff if you want to pack the kitchen sink with you, or if you're more minimalist, you can compress everything down and use it as a smaller setup. All right, I want to show you just how much these things can pack, keeping in mind that you could even add more bags to it like we just talked about. So I've got these packed kind of with a bunch of camping gear and stuff that I would take with me. It's my own gear. So let me just break it down for you and you can get a sense of, you know, how much stuff you can really fit in this bag. Um, people have found that this bag, and, and I've found that it's really large enough for extended camping trips, uh, back to Discovery Route rides, with multi-day camping. You just have to pack carefully, not bring too much stuff, right? And have minimalist camping gear. Um, so let me start at the top. So the beaver tails, come off. I'll just take this opportunity to talk about some of the other features. The things I like on the beaver tail, you've got this mat pocket here. I've got a first aid kit in here just for demonstration. So we'll go ahead and pull that out. That's my first aid kit, but I like to put the maps in here. Uh, so you've got that. When you open this part of the beaver tail, you have another pouch here. So I've got, this is good for stuff you need to access during the ride, especially maybe if you're not using a tank bag. I've got my helmet cleaner and my microfiber towel there that just fell off the table. I've got in here, I've got eye drops, chapstick, and tire gauge. I'm just giving you examples of kind of, you know, how much stuff this thing can take and how many little cubbies you have. The Stinger tail bag has a zipper compartment on the top here with a clear window. This is good for packing more stuff. I believe it also has, yes, it also has another zippered pouch at the bottom. This contains the backpack straps because this can be used as a backpack, which could be great in an emergency or if you just need a bag uh, to use as a backpack on your, on your trip. So we'll close that up. So I've got the strap run through here to attach this. Let me undo this. So now we've got the Stinger 22 free. I can show you everything I've got inside the Stinger 22. So in the Stinger 22, I've got a pair of camp shoes here. Uh, I got these on Amazon. They pack down real small. I have, this is all my like uh, kitchen stuff and cooking stuff, uh, some food, some toiletries, things like that. I've got another organizer cube. This is like toilet paper, um, towels, different, different camping stuff. So I've got a whole nother one of those. I've got a fold up camping chair and I think that's it for the stinger. Now that wasn't even totally full. You could fit more stuff than that. So that's everything I had on the top. Let me break down the side pods. So in this uh, ox pox here on this side, you unclip it, you've got a dry bag. I typically wouldn't do it like this, but in this dry bag, I've got one and a half liter water bottle. Uh, you could, that wasn't totally full. You could actually fit more stuff in there. In this side pod, unclip these. So to get into it, you have to unclip these two things. You've got this, this strap. So a mistake a lot of people make is that they'll, they'll do the straps like this. Um, this is, or the bag like this, like a traditional dry bag, but that's not how you work these. These have to go, they have a, a strap that pulls down this way. So you can cinch the bag down that way, much better design. So anyway, you also have this tensioning strap here to tension the harness. So in this bag, I've got my Moscomoto Ectotherm 
uh, heated jacket. This is the only thermal jacket I need to take on a trip. Talked about that in another video. I have another mid-layer. This is just for examples. Probably wouldn't pack both of these, but this is just an example to show you how much stuff goes in here. And also in this dry pod, I've got, and you can see here, you can pull the bag out. So if you're going to your hotel you, or something like that, you can simply pull the whole thing out of the harness and leave the harness on the bike. So also in here, this is my, uh, I think this is my tent. So, and I put it in a compression, compression sack. Let's break down the other, the other side. So in this side, in this uh, ox pox, I've got baby wipes for when I have my baby tantrums. I've got uh, a pair of gloves. I've got, what else? I don't even remember. Uh, another pair of gloves. Uh, oh, and that was it for that ox pox there. And that wasn't totally full either. In this side pod, I've got a jersey, Moscow Motor Workhorse jersey. So more clothing, more room for clothing. I've got my camp stove. Uh, MSR Whisper, I think it's called. I've got a sleeping bag liner for if it's cold outside, cold at night. Uh, this is my sleeping pad. It's a Nemo, uh, very nice Nemo tensor insulated, very nice pad actually. I've got my tent pole. So Moscow Moto will give you a tent pole bag when you buy this setup, but I just don't use it because my tent poles are small enough to fit down inside here. I use a, a REI tent, um, not very expensive. So tent poles. And then I've got stuff down in here. I'm gonna pull that out. I've got my uh, sleeping bag in this, in this one. So you can see that's pretty much everything you could really need, right? There's gonna be more stuff and you'd have a tank bag. You could have more bags, you're gonna wear a backpack. But that's a lot of stuff in the Reckless 80. All right, so we've kind of covered the Reckless 80. Again, if you want all the details of it, go over to Moscow Motors website. It's an amazing Reckless luggage system, probably the best out there on the market, and I've tried just about all of them out there. Um, highly recommend it if you're looking for a minimalist streamlined setup and you don't want to run pannier racks and you're looking for something as lightweight as you can get that you can move between multiple bikes. Now, a lot of you are gonna ask, should I get the Backcountry 35? the more traditional soft panniers, or should I get the Reckless system? And it's a good question because it's not too much more money to get the backcountry panniers, although you do have to get racks for your motorcycle. There are pros and cons to this, and there's no clear winner. I have my personal opinion, but that doesn't mean it's gonna be right for you. My personal opinion is, if you push me, that I find the traditional panniers just more convenient, and I'm about convenient, I'm, a little I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of weight and a little bit of the narrower size of the Rackless system for the convenience of these. So getting into and out of your luggage with the backcountry pannier, clip, 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 I'm in the bag, okay? Also, it's a rectangular shape, um, so it's easier to pack and easier to get to your stuff. In terms of capacity, well, let me show you, for instance, getting into this. It's not too bad to get into the luggage on these, on these side pods, on the, rec, on the Reckless, but it's more finicky, you know, you got this, it's just not as easy to deal with, right? Now, in terms of capacity, if you want a lot of capacity, you should probably go with the panniers because 35 means 35 liters per side, so 70 liters just for the panniers. Now, I have two ox pox on mine. They come with just one uh, on one side. So, and I also have an ox pox on, on the bottom. So each of my panniers is 44 liters. So I've got 88 liters just between my two backcountry panniers. Then that doesn't even include if I put on a duffel or a tail pack. So I'm already over the capacity of this whole system just with my two panniers. So if you pack a lot of stuff, these are easier. Now getting the luggage off the bike, that's the other thing. So to get the backcountry off the bike, you release the mounting strap, you pull up, and there, your bag's off, leaving the mounting puck behind. Put the bag back on, you just line it up, and it clips on. So obviously, that's more convenient. To get these off, well, you've got a lot of straps you're having to deal with. 
Now you might be asking, do you notice a difference in the handling or the weight distribution between the two setups? I absolutely do. The rackless system keeps the weight much closer to the bike and you notice the improvement in handling. I notice with the backcountry bags when I've got them fully loaded um, that the bike feels a bit more wobbly, doesn't handle quite as well. You notice those that weight acting as levers kind of out there. Not a deal breaker, but it's definitely a sacrifice in the handling and performance, especially if you have a lighter weight bike, maybe a dual sport bike, lighter weight adventure bike, or you're, or you're a really aggressive rider, you're probably gonna like the rackless system. So I think this video is already long enough. If you're gonna purchase any of the Moscow Moto stuff, uh, please consider using my links. Doesn't cost you anything extra, and it's a great way to support the channel. I do get a small commission if you buy products using any of my affiliate links below. So that's my disclaimer, but I'm only showing this stuff because I use it and I believe in it. I think it's the best luggage available for adventure motorcycles. So if you have any questions, put that in the comments below. Always check out Moscow Moto's own product videos, like I've said. Um, please use my links when shopping. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Ride safe, and I'll see you out there.